Hello guys, it's the second unit, part C. Now, landmarks of the pelvic. There are 8 landmarks in the pelvic. There is a numbering mistake, so don't mind it. Okay, the first landmark starting from 9. And this landmark, this region is known as sacral promontory. And the second one is this one, which is known as Alna of the sacrum. Actually, this part is known as Alna of the sacrum. Since this landmark is straight to it, this landmark is also known as Alna of the sacrum. Next, sacroiliac joint. This region consists of sacroiliac joint. So, this landmark is also known as sacroiliac joint. Next, iliac pectineal line. Iliac pectineal line or iliopectineal line. Iliac pectineal eminus or iliopectineal eminus. And next, superior ramus of the pubic bone. If you know the parts of the bones, I mean, you, if you know the parts of the pelvic, you will get to know these landmarks easily. This is superior ramus of the pubic bone. Next, inner corner or inner border of the pubic bone. And inner border of the sympasis pubis. These are the landmarks. These are the eight landmarks. These are the eight landmarks. In short, sacral promontory. Alna or wings of sacrum, sacroiliac joint, iliopectineal line, iliopectineal eminus, superior ramus of the pubic bone, upper inner border of the pubic bone, upper inner border of the sympasis pubis. These are the eight landmarks. Now the diameter of the pelvic. Before learning the diameter of the pelvic, you need to understand the difference between false pelvic and the true pelvic. And even you have to know the inlet, cavity, outlet. If you know all these things, you will understand the diameter easily. So, in female, the main function of the pelvic is the process of carrying the baby and the delivering the baby. That is the main function of the pelvic. In this whole pelvic, there are few regions which is not involved in the delivery process. These regions. These outer regions are actually not involved in the delivery process. They support the delivery but they are not actually involved in the delivery process. And they are called as false pelvic. And they are called as uh, the other name are greater or the pelvic majora. They are called as pelvic majora because they cover majority of the area. They are large in the size and this outer surface is called false pelvic because they are not involved in the delivery process. No obstetrical significance. But these parts are useful in the supporting the walls of the abdomen, intestine and other functions. Uh, true pelvic. This region, the inner corners of the pelvic are called as true pelvic because these parts are actually involved in the process of delivery of baby. Baby passes to baby passes in this way, and these bones are actually involved in the delivery of the baby. And this true pelvic is also called as lesser or pelvic minor because when you compare the false pelvic and the true pelvic, the space or the uh, joints present in the True pelvic are less, whereas in false pelvic, the space or the parts involved are more. So, that is why false pelvic is called greater or pelvic majora and true pelvic is called lesser or pelvic minora. Now, see what is inlet, cavity and outlet. Actually, baby passes through this way, ent entry and uh, it goes and then get delivered okay 
for example this is the diagram just for uh, rough okay this is the pelvic this is the pelvic entry and this is the pelvic end uh, ending okay this initial part is known as inlet pa baby enters this way and this place is called inlet and baby moves this way goes down and this region is called cavity and baby is born and this region is called outlet in the bone this is pelvic bone this is inlet this is cavity and this is outlet now the diameters in the pelvic this length is known as anterior posterior diameter and this middle line is known as transverse diameter and the diagonal line is known as oblique diameter anterior posterior transversal oblique diameter now anterior posterior diameter before learning this you have to learn the landmarks if you learn the landmarks it will be very easy for you to learn this anterior posterior attaches two parts they are sacral prominentry and inner corner border of the symphysis pubis and each of this lines has inlet cavity and outlet now anterior posterior has inlet cavity and outlet and this is pelvic okay inlet is 11 cavity is 12 centimeters and the outlet is 13 centimeter and it is anterior posterior and next transversal and this transversal attaches two landmarks and they are known as iliac pectineal line and even this transversal diameters have inlet cavity and outlet this inlet is 13 cavity is 12 and this outlet is 11 in this way if you men measure in this way at the inlet you will have 13 centimeter in the cavity region you will have 12 centimeter and at the outlet region at the uh, place of birth place you will have 11 centimeter oblique and this oblique meets two landmarks and one is sacroiliac joint and another one is iliac pectineal eminus sacroiliac joint iliac pectineal eminus and this is oblique diameter and inlet cavity outlet in few places outlets is mentioned as 12 in few they didn't mention it in inlet sorry inlet is 12 cavity is 12 and outlet is also 12 everything is 12 in oblique i will provide questions after completing this whole chapter that's it for today guys let's meet in the next video until then stay tuned